Alright, so these videos I'm making are a bit long, I think. Maybe I will do a really short video this time. So, what I've been doing is, like last time, I was talking about the address generator, and I believe it's a pair. There are several of them. So, this is one of them up there, and then you have another one, and then another one. And you can see the address internal address bus going out here and we also saw that this internal address bus um, it goes through and then there are other stuff like sprite position or sprite addresses and the registers and such that are connected to the internal bus so I was wanting to simulate this stuff and show you that it's actually counting now, I don't know what all of these uh, inputs are, and this guy, I think this guy is like a uh, count enable, or maybe this one. I think this guy over here, which also goes through everyone, is like a uh, reset. And here we have like a pass gate, and we can see that we also have another pass gate up here, because this is a clock line, this... Uh, Cyan thing here. So yes, let's get to it. So what I've done is that I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out what these layers are. If you look at it like this, you can see like, okay, there's a connection here. But it's not so easy to see where everything starts and where it stops in the diffusion layer anyway the green stuff so but I use common sense <laughs> okay it's not common sense but I use logic to say like for example uh, I had a problem for example I had this one was going over here then I was thinking okay this uh, transistor here then that's need an input he needs to make a transistor to be useful or connect to something else. It can't be swamped. Like. So therefore I remove this area and that made sense. So enough about that. So I put numbers on gates so you can see that if I bring in some more weight. Let's have a look at one and two and then Let's get some light on there. One and two. Since they are... I don't know what this guy is here. But you can see there's a pass gate. So there's like a latch going on here. So this one is latched after this one anyway. But never mind. Here we have a pull up. Here we have an output. So it's supposed to be a connection there. I haven't drawn it. And it goes to the next stage. So that's in interesting. This output it's driven by two transistors, one and two. And that's uh, why I draw it like this. You have a ground there, you have one and two. I think this means previous stage, like here, but it's uh, since this is the input of the gate, I think maybe if you look at it like this, you can see it comes from nowhere. <laughs> I have to find that out later. So, but I want to see this thing tick like a clock so and then you have three and five which are here you can see these this gate this red thing has the same network that's why one and three are connected together at the gate and then uh, three and five is a and and how do I see that well to pull this one down to ground we have to have them both on at the same time Therefore, I have stacked them on top of each other. You see there is another transistor on the same output there. So this one, these two or that one can pull it low. So therefore, I have drawn number four there. And uh, uh, back to one and two again. We can see that one and two uh, produce an uh, output here. And there's no nothing connected. Like this is just a pull-up. 
There's no output. Well, there's a pass gate here. We have a pass gate, and to simulate this, I just use. Well, I can use digital works, but now I'm in Linux, so I'll have to do something else. So I just use a, a, a latch or a dynamic latch. And the value is stored here. We can see a gate. There's nothing else than a gate after this transistor. So I believe this is uh, the value is stored in here dynamically. The charge will dissipate, but since this is uh, running really fast, uh, you don't have to worry about that. So the value is actually stored here. Then we have, a, have uh, another transistor there, which just behaves uh, like a, um, a uh, inverter. So number seven, it behaves like an inverter. You can see the pull-up. The pull-up is there. And look, it goes back again here, which is the pass gate I talked about, which is driven by a very long net going through, I don't know what it is, I just drew a long line here to represent that. There's also something which I think is a reset for the counter, um, and that's out here. So basically we have a storage there and there. Then finally, uh, this stored value goes through three gates. That's why we have a line that goes back to number five and number two. So at this point you can see um, two, five and nine actually. So nine is the next stage. Number nine is another inverter and the way I see that again this is a pull up uh, okay, we need, there's a uh, gate here, which I haven't drawn in red yet, but that's another transistor, which is another driver of sorts, number 10, where the hell did I go anyway, I think that's another reset or something. <laughs> and then, it drives this one, which drives the internal bus which I have written here, internal address bus. So that's basically the output. This is from Corona hand sanitizer. So we had a little bit of spillage here. Now, this isn't really easy to read. So this is the transistor level. So when we go from transistor level to something logic, I had to doodle a little and it didn't work. And I redraw this. It's something that is makes a bit more sense. All right, so let's take one thing at a time. We have a gate system here, which is these two is anded because when this one and this one is on, the output is low. If this one is on, the output is also low. So it's three and five or four. And then if we look at this side, three and five or four. I, so I drew this first, like 3 and 5, or 4 can make the output low. So I basically, uh, this is the one I think. <laughs> 3 and 5, or 4. And then I didn't know what this was, so I just drew 4 there. Then if we look at what is driving 4, yeah that is 1 and 2, which share the same gates as 3 and 5. 1 and 2, 3 and 5. We can see that here, here actually. 3 and 1, right? 3 and 1. And we have 2 and 5, 2 and 5, and also 9, but that comes later. Anyway, uh, so number 4 is a product of this gate here. And this is a NAND gate, because this uh, NOR, NOR gate, sorry, <laughs> so this is actually wrong. I shouldn't write on my monitor, so I'll just do it carefully. This one is on, or this one is on, will turn the output off. So that's, that's one. 
and then you get the signal here it has a bypass transistor this one here number six an inverter another pass transistor with something driving it and then the output output of that is the actual stored value it goes out to the internal bus and um, it goes back into the circuit so that's the circuit so let's have a look at if you were going to simulate it 11 minutes already I have to edit this video that's okay um, let's have a look I've used logic logically we have the same circuit here but I wasn't able to use buffers you can use buffers in here um, but that didn't work because you get a undefined output if I use digital works it will remember the last output but to make this work I'm using the flip-flops instead and we have the clock coming in here we have an input here I don't know if you can see it but it's the same circuit here so we have a feedback loop here after the last pass gate and this pass gate, pass gate has a clear as we saw it could have been a pull up actually so I might have drawn this the wrong way because it makes sense that the output is supposed to be off when it's cleared so this is clear and the pass gate has also a transistor such as oh, this, the pass gate transistor is either on or off so that's why I have this edge input doing here so I can click this and the output will change now how does this work well as I said I don't know what these inputs are I just guess them but let's look at behavior when we click on them so let's start with this one up let's see and let's hit reset this is the state of the reset now this one is synchronized input so to the clock so I will just uh, click it many times <laughs> just to get some data through and as you can see while the clock is going nothing is happening and uh, I can click this one nothing happens and uh, do you also remember that this was a synchronized clock that means that the output only changes whenever the clock is changing so and the counting is also only happening when the clock is changing so it's not a ripple or anything so um, let's switch this one which we still don't know what is see what happens now pay close attention to this one and this one I'm just clicking many times just to get something out from here to here so what happening is that this one is flashing half as far uh, this one is flashing half as fast as this one and that's great because what is actually happening then we have the first bit of the counter that's what a counter do does So, and if I switch it back, it stops counting. Actually, now we are back at where we started, but let's try, do, 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 let's try to stay there when it, the output is high. See, it stays high, so it's no longer counting. I'm hoping to, when I'm finished, this is just the first bit, and uh, we can also see that the output put from the first stage here let's get it back again so that must be number four which was it's right here so I believe it comes in here and then out here it goes 
up to the next part of the counter which is sort of upside down the same thing but it's upside down and you can see the next bit is more similar to the first to the first one which you have this input here you had these three gates that had the same network you had this pass transistor here you have this pass transistor here so the sequence repeats and uh, the point I'm trying to make here is that for this thing to count up more than one bit, say two bits, you need to feed the output from the first bit of the counter to the next one, and I believe that is this one. So now I'm not uh, completely sure what this means, but uh, I'm pretty sure that is the next bit because when you look on the side here, this is. The first bit, and this is the next bit, and this bit is driven right there. So you can see there's a repeating pattern. It's driven there, it's driven there, so I just pull it down, it's driven there, and so on. Hope you find that interesting. I will uh, continue researching this. So the really hardest part of this whole thing is actually uh, drawing this diffusion network as you can see up here I have all the layers so I have the diffusion network which is really really poor in this uh, die shot but that's all I have for now if someone gives me another one uh, it still will be different I probably be a different chip that's also a problem. So because I looked at other chips and you can't just put your drawings on top of that. So, but that would be easier if it, if uh, all the layers were more easier to comprehend. For example, you can see here that uh, whenever there's a line here from the metal, this white thing, uh, it sort of masks out the uh, underlying ones. You can see them through the metal. But when there's a line, <laughs> they don't know always where they go. So, and another thing, uh, when you draw, like you try, you start drawing here, right? You want to complete your zone, but then suddenly you find out that oh, it's going everywhere. Like <laughs> where does it stop? So you have to make a choice. Um, just draw something partial like here I'm just stopped there it's, it's actually continuing into the next bit but I will just uh, uni make a union later a pair can make a union there yeah so that's how I work it's not very easy to say the least but I've had a week of doing almost nothing in this uh, YouTube channel I did start on this, but uh, it was uh, excellent. I think I needed some break. So usually in the beginning of the year, I'm I'm not doing much. It's not that I want to stop doing YouTube or anything. It's just I need a break. Also, at work, it's really hard as usual. So that's great. Uh, let's uh, talk more in another video. <laughs> Thank you for watching. See you in another one. Thanks. Bye bye.